Hello, my name is Ethan, and welcome back to another episode of Path of Exile Ultimatum League 3.14. In this episode, I prepared some stuff for the upcoming Gauntlet event. If you don't know what this is, basically, uh, there's an event hosted by GGG with Zizarin, and they are doing, uh, it's like class gauntlet, so first, second, third of each class gets a portion of $50,000, and so first of a class can win $4,000, and there will also be uh, M free MTX for getting up to level 90, uh, you, you get into draws, if you get into, if you get to level 90, you can also win a RTX 3800 computer, like some crazy computer, uh, you, you could also uh, go for bounties, so streamers will be getting donations to put towards a bounty that they get to choose so let's say they could say don't ascend and get level 100 and they've done that before that's an example uh and so i could go for bounties you could win like 400 dollars here 400 dollars there um my main goal will be maps hit maps for without dying and then level 90 we'll get into all the mtx draws and possibly go for a bounty at that point where I might die for it. So here now I will go into uh, the build that I've made for the gauntlet. So I've given you a minute and a half of warning. This is the gauntlet build. Don't be like, Ethan, is this a league starter? No, this is gauntlet specific. Gauntlet is super hard. This season it has monsters have increased area of effect instead of extra projectiles but then it has like extra monster damage attack speed cast speed move speed uh physical as extra lightning fire and chaos you have minus reses it's disgusting 40 percent more monster life so you gotta do more damage uh here we go let's get into the build uh so to start it off let's get a cam on uh okay so <laughs> so here you see uh my level 12 my 12 point start so normally you'd be used to me going through this minion live and all this and the minion damage uh we're going straight to minion instability why is that your minions are dead uh yep minion survivability forehead so you take these first nine points straight to minion instability spend the extra three on quick recovery this build is a minion instability pop popcorn build so we start with some enraging spirit popcorn and at level 10 we switch to val summon skeleton popcorn obviously you just have regular skeletons but then you can val the skeletons that you buy from the shop to go for val summon skeletons you can also do val side areas to get an early val summon skeletons because i figure you summon skellies and then if you want the pop on the boss you could do val summon skellies and it goes pop 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 and it's pretty cool and uh, to get them to pop, we use Infernal Legion to make them take a percentage of their life per second. Um, yep, pretty cool. In the beginning, the minions will just be dying. So once you get uh, 9 points, the minion instability is just going to work because the monsters do so much damage and have so much AoE. And uh, your minions already kind of have trouble surviving in the early game. And uh, even with Vitality, they're still going to die. Uh, even with some of the reses, they're still going to die. Uh, this gauntlet's pretty insane. So now I'll walk you through the build. Uh, first 12 points, minion instability and quick recovery. Now you're already a god. Trust me. Uh, at 12 points, we get extra life, extra life, and then the extra lord of the dead. Extra minion life, extra minion damage, and extra skeleton. Extra skeleton is gigantic. Uh, 36 points, we're getting that enduring bond grave pack. Grave pack is gigantic, huge, double damage, pog champ. And then we're going for Fearsome Force because the area of effect for minions actually affects minion instability. Uh, you can you can check in the uh, final skeleton link when you put it instead of default attack to minion instability. There's actually AoE on it. There's a radius. And so it's really fun when you get a lot of area on the, uh, on the minion instability. Because it, 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 your clear goes up. This doesn't really help the boss TPS that much. But it helps for clear. Uh, and then I go for... Uh, at 48, we're going for Golem Commander and this extra life. Uh, and the Golem Commander is because we actually are going Elementalist. So, basically at level... Or at, at the point that you get this, uh, you're getting your Ascendancy 2. So you get another Golem, another Golem and then increased effect of the golems and they automatically respawn after four seconds of being killed so you can 
you can get three. And so I've put it here that you would have at the 38 mark, uh, you're going to have a stone golem linked to feeding frenzy and then a chaos golem and a lightning golem. I mean, Cha chaos golem, carrion golem with minion life. Uh, I started it off here at 34, sorry. At 34, you only have these three golems. Uh, and then I add in the lightning golem after to show that when you get your extra ascendancy, uh, you'll you'll get your extra golem there. Uh, so we can continue. So you have three golems to start at like 34 or so. Um, obviously, you don't ascend to like 40 in the, in the gauntlet because you want to be safe. Or, or 45, depending on how safe you want to be in the beginning. Um, and then 60 points. We're going for that death attunement through the life and the regen. Uh, and then we get Purity of Flesh, and we started to go towards Combat Stamina. Uh, continue. Then we can get a uh, Big Fat Life Wheel, finish up Combat Stamina. We're starting to stack life, and we get our extra Ascendancy. Uh, this is really cool. Uh, so now you would have all the Golems, and you get Full Elemental Ailment Immune, which I realize Full Elemental Ailment Immunity in this Gauntlet is really nice, because the monsters are uh, have free physical... Uh, as extra fire, lightning, and cold. So the physical as cold gets you frozen, the physical as lightning gets you shocked, and the physical as uh, fire gets you ignited. Have this ascendancy, have your golems, and no longer be any of those. Uh, your golems also become immune to elemental damage, so even though we've skipped all the elemental resistance on the skill tree, now your golems are immune to elemental damage, so they actually will survive a lot more than you would think. Especially in the gauntlet where they had the fizz as fire, fizz as lightning, fizz as cold. So now those don't do anything because they don't take extra elemental damage. Uh, and then you also get increased effect and you get another golem. So you can get the lightning golem, which gives you cast speed. So then across the board, you're going to have the extra uh, cast speed from lightning golem to summon the skeletons. You're going to have the extra physical damage added to your uh, skeletons, which helps the damage. Uh, and you're going to have the physical damage reduction from the chaos golem and the life regeneration from the stone golem, along with getting feeding frenzy off the stone golem. It's really sick. This is crazy. Uh, I'm really impressed with what I've been able to set up. So then we go 84 and you can go get more life, more regen, more armor, uh, 84. Nice. And then we continue 96. We can go get soul of steel, extra life, finish up the life here at 108 and Merc, finish up more life, get the jug, uh, juggernaut, which is more life and armor. And we get Merc lab. So then you can go bastion of elements for the fat elemental damage shield which is really good and can help against volatile flame bloods because they'll have increased area and they're kind of hard to dodge in my opinion and also uh for like ultimatum i find fire and lightning to hurt a lot uh even cold's pretty bad the elemental damage in ultimatum is pretty crazy so this bastion of elements can really help uh and then 120 is where i grab oh wait did i show the rest yeah so here's where I grabbed the rest of the jewel sockets and I grabbed elemental equilibrium so that we added uh, in the final links. When you get this, you'll add a storm brand and then in the ring. So you'll wear one unset ring with a storm brand and uh, you can trigger elemental equilibrium, which when you hit an enemy with elemental damage, we're going to increase the resistance to lightning damage by 25%. But we're going to reduce the resistance to other elements by 50%. So, just as an example, in the final thing, 30,000, 31,000, just triggering this is this much damage. Um, it's really insane. It's really cool. And then we also take the ascendancy for Uber Lab to have exposure exposures you inflict apply an extra 25% to the affected resistance. Uh, regen 1% of mana per second if you've inflicted exposure recently. Uh, so it should work that elemental equilibrium. Oh. Oh. Wait a minute. Maybe that doesn't work. Does that work? I don't know. I'll leave this in as this is what I planned. This is what I thought. But oh god, maybe it doesn't work actually. <laughs> now I'm thinking it doesn't work. Oh no. Well, either way, now I want to walk you through the uh, gems. 
Uh, we went to start with Ethereal Knives and Ray Zombie. You can also do Freezing Pulse if you prefer because I'm not recommending Animate Weapon for this because they have a lot of trouble surviving. The main reason we did Animate Weapon in a normal League Starter is because you summon them. They're permanent. Well, not permanent, but they last quite a while. They follow you around like zombies. They're a little bit cooler than Skeletons for a while there or better cooler than the Summoning Raging Spirit. But in this gauntlet, nothing survives, so... Uh, all your minions are the same. Zombies are just kind of like extra fodder, extra meat shield in the beginning. You can just summon them, and when they die, well, you gotta resummon them, and it's really annoying. But treat it more like a skeleton that can follow you, and uh, and be okay with that because it's gonna happen. And then yeah, ethereal knives or freezing pulse is a decent start. At level 4, this is when the game starts, we get Raging Spirit Phantasm, we're clearing like a god, even without the minion nodes on the skill tree, like going straight to, um, to minion instability, it should be fine, should be good, and then at, at those 9 points, we're going to be insanely strong, uh, so I did Raise Zombie Phantasm, these won't survive, but you can resummon the zombie, and we get Frost Blink. Level 8, I did Zombie, Minion Damage, Phantasm. Rhea, and then the SRS. This is where we grab Infernal Legion. This was supposed to be level 1. I messed up. Uh, so Infernal Legion will burn your Summon Raging Spirit for 40% of its life per, uh, fire damage per second. And uh, they don't have resistances because I don't take any on the skill tree. And so your Summon Raging Spirit is just going to burn and then it'll pop at half HP. Because they changed low life this season from 33% to 50% life for low life so now minion instability is actually easier to proc and then um at level 10 i did the val summon skeleton minion damage infernal legion so it's similar to the uh srs but the difference is just at a level one summon skeleton you can summon two uh already so to show it one ninety four life and if you check the SRS level 1, 190, uh, 68. So you would have to summon like three summon raging spirits to match the skeleton, but also the summon raging spirit is only level 4, so we should level up the gem so that it's a higher level to match the skeletons. There we go. Uh, so we can see that the summon raging spirit goes up to 89. Uh, maybe we give it another level, 120, 163. So even if it was level 4, has a requirement of level 12, more than the skeleton, um, the skeleton is pretty insane because you'll be able to summon two of them as well. So, so skeletons are really good for this pop build. You can summon two of them. Oh, the regen was 194. That's the vitality. Life is 79. Um, so, yep, I like Skeleton better, and then when you get to a level 20 Skeleton, when you get the Skeleton to level 20, you can summon four of them. I don't know why it says three here, that's wrong. <laughs> you could summon four per cast. It's, it's actually wrong, what the heck? Oh, wait. Okay, okay, you have to get 21. Okay, that's pretty cool. Yeah, you have to get... 3 is still enough to spawn because the cap is uh, not that high. You only have the extra 1 from Death of Tumen and the extra 1 from the Lord of the Dead. Uh, you could also go gear with extra skeletons after the fact, but that's besides the point. Because it's about making it to maps and shit, in my opinion. It's pretty hard to get there. Uh, Alright, let's continue. Uh, level 10, I grab Vitality for our own survivability. Uh, flame dash instead of frost blink because farther more um, you get to keep charges so you can have multiple casts of it and it's instant I really like it uh, level 12 I get flesh offering instead of spirit offering because I don't want to give resistances and keep the minions alive I want them to pop uh, desecrate to be able to cast the flesh offering which is mostly for move speed um, so that the minions can actually reach the target or uh, walk around from where I cast it if I don't cast it directly on top of the enemy. Then Skitterbot Unbound Ailments at level 16. Val Summon Skeleton at level 18. I went for an extra minion life. You get minion life at level 18. 
Zombie, added minion life instead of minion damage to keep them alive. They're not alive. They're going to keep dying, and you can keep raising them, and it's real fun. Convocation, level 24 to maybe help the zombie survive. Uh, flammability also at 24, so you could have a curse for bosses. War banner generosity at 31 is kind of cool because it gives you extra accuracy, and, it, and your skeletons do still attack uh, while they're dying, so it's not useless, and I, I did this in my practice. Um, but then you can drop this later for gem space if you want. Uh, and then the zombies at 31 can get feeding frenzy if you want. Again, they don't really survive, so maybe uh, you would prefer elemental army to maybe try to keep them alive. Overall, these aren't surviving, and it's just kind of uh, a meme to have to keep respawning them. So, yep. Yeah. And then at 34, we finally get our golems, and we get our ascendancy. But we're, we're probably waiting for like 40 or 40 something for the ascendancy. So we start with like, we, we could start with a chaos golem. And then we could grab the thing on the skill tree to get an extra one. And we could grab the extra stone golem for the regen. And you put feeding frenzy on the stone golem. And you can, and you can go chaos golem minion life. Because uh, the chaos golem is squishier than the stone golem. The stone golem is a tank. I'll show you the end game one. So the stone golem is linked to feeding frenzy. Has 25,000 life. The carry-on golem is linked to minion life and has 27,000. Um, and then the stone golem also has armor. 1,224 armor, some evasion. It's a, it's a tank. It's actually a tank. So you can put feeding frenzy on it and it should be fine. And once you have this first ascendancy, your golems are going to automatically respawn after 4 seconds of being killed anyway. So that's really cool. Uh, I like that a lot. And then at 38... Uh, this is my six link I chose. It's not in specific order. I want to make that clear. Because uh, obviously you kind of need the Infernal Legion for them to, to pop. To die. So then you get the minion damage and the minion life to do the damage. Uh, Ellie focus. More Ellie damage. And uh, they cannot inflict elemental ailments. So no ignite. And then fire pen for bosses later. Pogchamp. Convocation. To keep them alive in the weapon. Flesh offering. And flame dash. And the other weapon, so like a shield, a uh, cast on damage taken, immortal, call, and feeble. So we switched out flammability for enfeeble by uh, when you start to have your actual links. Because we can cut at Act 6, then we can get our cast on damage taken, our immortal, call, and feeble setup. It's all dependent on our level 1 cast on damage taken that automatically triggers the immortal call level 3, level 38. And the enfeeble level 5, 36, has to be under level 38 to be activated by this level 1 cast on damage taken. And then I did a skitter bots unbound ailment in the glove. And we have stone golem feeding frenzy glove. Then we have the helmet chaos golem carry on golem lightning golem minion life. So this is instead of specter zombies life tap and all that. We did um, this juicy golem setup. And then I did minion life instead of meat shield. Because it's actually more survivability. Shield charge fortify pog. And uh, I put these in the boots now. So vitality and desecrate into the boot. So that we didn't need unset rings right away. We can actually wait even longer. Uh, less gems. And then at level 20. Um, I added Stormbrand. So you need one unset ring. Because of the. Uh, elemental equilibrium. And trying to make them weak to. Uh, fire and cold. Comp and strong against lightning. And it's the same links, but it's all level 20 to show the DPS and to show the situation and the survival, survivability of stuff. So you could see immune to elemental and they have 30,000, 36,000. It's actually not that bad. Um, and they automatically respawn if they die. So then we'll be full elemental ailment immune. Uh, have all the buffs. So as you can see, it ends up being 30,000 on a minion instability pop, which has a radius of... Where is it? Radius of 26. That's gigantic, in my opinion, for an explosion on our minion. Uh, and then they also attack, right? They still have decent attack damage. And uh, there's also the Infernal Legion damage. And then there's the actual pop. So they, they do quite a lot of damage. It's pretty surprising. And this is one. You summon three of them per cast and if you get it to 21 which would be insane if you got this to 21 then you get a fourth one per cast 
And the reason why I thought this was 4 automatically at 20 is because normally I'm a necromancer and you get an extra 2 levels so that's like 22. And I realized it as I was saying, I was like, oh, we're an elementalist. I, I missed this one part, but we can only have 9 and we can cast them so fucking quickly that we're going to reach the max in a second. And we don't want to reach the max because um, if you don't let them reach half HP and explode with minion stability you resetting them by summoning them too fast doesn't act, they don't actually explode so you want them to die faster so for example there's actually a wand i mean a weapon i, I plan to try to get we would love an arendale's embrace to make summon skeletons take 30 percent of their max life per second as fire damage we can actually help them die faster so then we could summon them more and it would increase our dps uh, and then it also makes summon skeletons cover enemies in ash on hit. Uh, covering enemies in ash on hit is this. 20% increased fire damage taken, 20% less move speed. So that's really strong. And summon skeletons have avatar of fire. That's pretty good. Avatar of fire is this. To make 50% uh, of physical cold and lightning damage converted to fire and you deal no non-fire pretty cool so then they deal fire and it scales with uh your fire stuff it, we could go for um like flammability and stuff but either way it, that's a pretty cool weapon to help you kill them faster and uh and then yeah summoning four per and then the val summon skeleton still you have that too you could just go for a regular 21 skelly um and then yeah this this is my setup i'm pretty happy with it uh, the only thing would be how rippy this this uh, gauntlet is going to be, and if 7,000 life, 1,000 regen, some good physical damage reduction, reses, uh, obviously should actually cap your chaos. The items I put apparently doesn't cap your chaos. I'm unsure how I did that, but um, then I also switched the jewels to life minion damage for an example because I had taunt in the build, but the stone golem should taunt automatically with his slam so that we don't need a taunt jewel in the build uh so that's what i did here and then i kept blind uh because uh that should still work like with attacks the skeletons are still attacking and the golems will attack but the golems uh i don't know how how much we're gonna have them blinded so i was also thinking about not running a blind to be able to run Two point unwavering stance is a possibility so that you're stun immune because uh, casting while stunned is impossible and it might be too rippy uh, for ultimatum so we might need to be stun immune uh, i'm not entirely like wasn't fully sure about the end end but uh this should get should be uh this is my prep to get to maps and uh this is my strongest thing i could come up with other than going some other ascendancy like Guardian, I'll, I'll give you guys a quick overview. Guardian looked cool, but it looked like a lot of damage, like maybe Onslaught or 10% more damage. It can give uh, attack speed area. The area of effect on the uh, minion instability would be kind of cool, but Intimidate Unnerve doesn't work on minion instability. Bastion of Hope is block. I don't really want it. Uh, the stun immunity is kind of cool, and then reduced effect of curses. I was like, wait... This has no physical damage reduction in the things I want to take. So, Elementalist is tankier. I get Elemental Ailment Immune. I get the Ridiculous Regen. I get the extra damage. Uh, it's it's nice, some nice extra damage. It's actually not that bad. Um, and then we get the extra Bastion of Elements. We're, we have the automatically resummoning Golems. Then we get to enjoy the Golem package. Uh, and then it could actually scale up if we found a clay shaper, primordial chain. I don't actually, primordial chain might not work. Maybe I'd make a golem pop build at that point. Uh, but then you can't make them take fire damage from Infernal Legion to pop. So I don't know how you would get them killed. Maybe you just make them really squishy. <laughs> I don't know. It's really weird. And then you wouldn't be able to gain the effect, the buff effect. So it's, it's not that great. But uh, either way, I also thought about going juggernaut and i was like oh, i get a little bit more of the the elemental ailment immune thing sounds really nice honestly um and then the regen and the, i still get 14 percent physical damage reduction just from the chaos golem i think let me check this it's really crazy it's more than the uh, bone barrier 
Look at this, 14% from a Chaos Golem, and this is, if you get it to 20, 22, then it's 18%. So you're seeing that a plus one across the board would be really nice because if you got a 21 Chaos Golem if you, and if you had your 20 Skeleton, when you get an extra level on the Skelly, you get to summon four instead of three. And if you get the extra level then on the 21 thing, so a global plus one intelligence or plus one spell or plus one minion, something like that, then you'd get the 22 on the Chaos Golem too, which would get you the extra 4% physical damage reduction is like an endurance charge. It's really cool. That's really powerful and really insane. Uh, either way, I hope this helps people who are interested in the gauntlet. Uh, you can now practice this. You can try it out. You can get better at it. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's, it's going to be a fucking insane gauntlet. It's really hard. And uh, this is what I would be running. Hope you guys enjoy playtesting this and practicing. Uh, I'm going to enjoy my birthday today. I'm probably going to go get pizza and then start my stream and just uh, chill out with the boys. I turned 27! Woo! <laughs> Old, no, uh, happy birthday to me. Thank you guys for watching. Thanks for hanging out. I hope you guys enjoyed. And, uh, now I'm gonna take this opportunity to thank my Patreon, my YouTube members who financially support the channel. I can't do this without you guys, so thank you guys for all the support, and thank you to anyone new who joins the Patreon and the YouTube members today, and I'll see you guys in the next episode. Bye!